On this worksheet, we are going to be determining the structure of a molecule from its molecular formula, its proton NMR, which is going to be on the top of the page, and its carbon NMR, which is going to be on the bottom of the page. One of the ways that you can always tell proton from carbon NMR is the ppm scale. In carbon NMR, it goes all the way up to 200. And with proton NMR, it typically only goes up to 10. Sometimes it might go all the way up to like 15, but it certainly never goes up all the way to 200. So this first molecule that we're looking at, this is actually really tricky um, because notice that there is no information on these peaks. So we don't have integrals or anything, just a couple of peaks. It's going to be difficult for us to figure this out. Let's start by calculating the HDI from the molecular formula. We have five carbon atoms. Five times two is 10 plus two is a maximum of 12 hydrogen atoms, and that's exactly how many hydrogen atoms we have. So this molecule has an HDI of zero, which means no double bonds, no rings, nothing like that. Now we do have a couple of oxygen atoms in the molecule. Normally when I see an O2 in the molecular formula, normally I assume that I have something like this. Could be a carboxylic acid, could be an ester, um, but that's definitely not the case here because in order to have this functional group, we have to have a double, we have a double bond, so we could not have an HDI of zero. So that means the oxygen atoms in this molecule are either going to be alcohols or they're going to be ethers, which are oxygens that are single bonded in between a couple of carbon atoms. So let's kind of change that to carbons. We're going to have one of those two situations here. Let's take a look at the, let's go down to the carbon NMR first. Remember, there's very little information that we can get from a carbon NMR. Carbon NMR is never going to show us integration, and it's also never going to show us splitting. So all that we can tell from the carbon NMR is just the number of peaks that corresponds to the number of types of carbon atoms. We have three peaks, three different types of carbon atoms. And we'll just make a note that we have three types of carbon. We can also get information about chemical shift from carbon NMR, but uh, right now at this point, we don't, need to, we don't need to think about that. So for our proton NMR, normally we have integration and we have splitting information and stuff like that. Um, obviously, these two peaks are both singlets. That's you know easy for us to see that they are singlets. And so that tells us for both of these peaks that n plus 1 equals 1, which means that n equals 0. So we know that the hydrogen atoms in this molecule have no neighbors at all. So that's something that we know. We also can tell that since there's only two types of peaks, that means that we only have two types of hydrogens. Uh, so <laughs> there's a really not a whole lot of information to help us kind of get started on this molecule. Uh, one last thing, uh, let's talk a little bit about the COH versus COC situation. If we have a hydrogen that is attached to an oxygen, like an alcohol, an OH group, that hydrogen atom is going to show up anywhere between 2 and 5 on the proton NMR. So anywhere in here is going to be an OH peak. Um, and we do have a peak in the OH area. So it is possible that this peak right here could correspond to an alcohol because it's in the right spot. However, the hydrogens that are attached to oxygens on molecules in the NMR, their peaks are typically like shorter and they're usually kind of broad looking. They don't look normal. So they're not clean, uh, sharp, spiky, normal peaks. They're... Um, intensity, which, you know, we really don't get a lot of information about the heights of peaks in NMRs, but they, they almost never are this high. And also they are almost never clean, clear singlets. They just look weird for an NMR. And because um, even though we do have a peak in the right spot for it to be an alcohol, the appearance of this peak is very normal. It's a very normal looking singlet. And that makes me think that I don't have an alcohol. So I want to rule this out. I believe that there that this molecule has an ether group, COC, not an alcohol. I could be wrong, but I think that once we try to figure this molecule out, if I'm going to keep in mind that I could be wrong. So as I'm working on figuring this molecule out, if I can't come up with anything reasonable, I'll go back to consider the possibility that there might be an alcohol. 
So we have um, only two different types of hydrogens, and we have a lot of hydrogen atoms in the molecule, which means that this molecule is going to have a lot of symmetry to it. There's going to need to be a lot of symmetry, like, like maybe what we have if we have two types of hydrogens. Maybe we have two sets of two methyl groups. Uh, which would make sense for two types of hydrogens, two sets of two methyl groups on the molecule. So maybe like we have a methyl group here and then a methyl group over on the other side of the molecule, and these two methyl groups are going to be identical to each other. That would account for six of the 12 hydrogen. That would account for one set of, um, of one particular peak. We know that these uh, none of the hydrogen atoms have neighbors, so whatever is attached over here, there can't be any hydrogen atoms attached to it at all. And that's going to be really difficult to do if I use a carbon atom there. Uh, if I put carbon atoms here, I'm not sure uh, how I would go about doing that, but if I use an oxygen atom here kind of as a, a gap to keep these hydrogens away from other hydrogens, I think that that would work. And that's going to satisfy the ether thing, and it's also going to take care of both of my oxygen atoms. I don't want to connect these directly to each other because if I do that, I've got nowhere to put the other three or carbon atoms and all the rest of the hydrogen atoms. I don't want to put a bond putting them right together, but maybe I connect them with uh, just one carbon atom like that. Now I've got three of my carbon atoms. I could put another set of methyls on there. So two, I'm going with the idea of two sets of two methyls. So this, this would be A, this would be B, and that would give me two sets of, two sets of methyl groups, 12 total hydrogens. They would all be singlets. And this also gives me one, two, three carbon atoms. I think that this is it. This molecule looks pretty reasonable. Uh, There's a lot of guessing and checking, but I think I got lucky on the first try. Let's take a look at the next one and hopefully it has a little bit more data. Uh, this looks much easier to analyze. So our, our molecular formula is C7H14O2. Let's calculate our HDI. Seven times two is 14 plus two is 16. Maximum hydrogen minus the 14 that we do have divided by two gives us an HDI of one. So that means we either have one double bond or we have one ring. And we have an O2 in the molecule. So remember I told you whenever I see an O2, the most common situation when you have an O2 is that you have this type of group right here. It could be a carboxylic acid or it could be an ester. But probably we have this group right here. Let's go first, let's go down to the carbon NMR because there's limited information in the carbon NMR, so let's just get that information right away. There's a note on here telling us that there are two peaks at 27 and 28, so that would be right here. Um, I probably would have only thought that that was one peak, but since I'm being told that there's two peaks, I can kind of see there are two peaks really close together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six types of carbons. In this molecule. Another thing that we can get out of the carbon NMR, this particular carbon NMR, the position of this peak. So normally I don't spend a lot of time thinking about shift, but when you have a peak that is shifted this much, it's like almost all the way to the left hand side, this uh, position on the NMR spectrum corresponds to a carbon oxygen double bond. For carbon NMR, corresponds to carbon oxygen double bond. Could be an aldehyde, could be a carboxylic acid, could be an ester, could be a ketone. So um, I'm gonna just kind of keep that in mind that I think I have a carbon oxygen double bond and that's consistent with what I was thinking about the molecular formula anyways. I was originally thinking it's probably gonna be something like this right here. So this part of the spectrum, again, this peaks here typically correspond to carbon oxygen double bonds. So let's take that information back up and start working on the proton, proton NMR. We're bringing up here saying 
that we have six types of carbons for sure, and then that the carbon NMR wants us to believe that we have a carbon-oxygen double bond. We're going to keep an open mind, maybe it's wrong, that that's what it wants us to believe. Now we're going to get to work analyzing our um, proton NMR. The integrals have already been reduced for us, so that's super. We don't have to do the math on that. We can jump right into analyzing the splitting patterns. This is a doublet, which means that it has one neighbor. One plus one is two. Uh, right here, we have a quartet, which means that this guy has three neighbors. This is a multiplet, which means that it has neighbors to the left and neighbors to the right. And we don't really know exactly how many it has. But just the fact that it has neighbors to the left and neighbors to the right is going to be helpful to us. We have a triplet, which tells us that n equals 2. It has two neighbors. And we have a doublet, which tells us that n equals 1. So this is 6 hydrogens, n equals 1. We've got a couple of hints, a couple of things that I want to focus on. First, we have the two quartet plus the three triplet that belong, they belong together. So we have two matching up with two, and we have three matching up with three. This pattern right here almost always corresponds to an ethyl group. CH2, CH3. We have two, so we're looking at these guys right here. We have two with three neighbors, and we have three with two neighbors right there. So we're just going to, right away, we're going to say that's what those two peaks are right there. That's the first thing that I'm looking at. The second thing that I'm paying attention to is this guy right here, six hydrogens with one neighbor. When we have six hydrogen atoms, that almost always means two equivalent methyl groups that are both attached to the same carbon. So like that. Two equivalent methyl groups. So I've got two, all six hydrogens, and they have one neighbor. So that means the carbon that they're attached to, that they're sharing, that guy has one hydrogen on it right there. So this and this, they belong together or they match up. This gives me this information. Now, now the next thing I see, I'm actually going to make this one hydrogen a different color. The next thing that I see is I've drawn this one hydrogen right here, and I did have one hydrogen in my spectrum that was a multiplet. So that means it's being split by people to the left and split by people to the right. So that tells me that over here, I want to attach to another carbon. I'm going to make it a different color. I want to attach to another carbon, and I want this carbon atom to have hydrogens on it because I want this hydrogen to be split by these guys and also be split by whatever might be over here. So I'm not sure um, exactly what I should put here, but I, I know that at least one of these needs to be a hydrogen. I'm going to put some H question marks because I know I want to have at least one hydrogen there. I'm just not sure if I actually want to have two hydrogens there. Uh, so now what, what else should I have going on here? I've got this ethyl group, and this ethyl group is isolated from the rest of the molecule. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of draw my ethyl group over here. When I say um, it's isolated from the rest of the molecule, what I mean by that is that these hydrogens right here, these hydrogens right here, they're only being split by these, the CH3 group. So whatever is over here, there are no hydrogens attached to it at all, none. Uh, and actually, it may not even be a carbon because we have got oxygens right here. So maybe I erased the C symbol there. So I know that I can't attach this directly, like um, directly to here. I know that these hydrogens could not be these guys right here uh, because they would be being split to the left and also split to the right. And that's not what we see happening. So the way what I've drawn right now, I'm going to pause and I'm going to see how I'm doing in terms of total number of carbon atoms and types of carbon atoms. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six total carbon atoms. I just need one more. 
And what I've drawn so far in terms of types, I've got one, two, three, four, five types. So I just need one more. Now what I'm not having accounted for yet is this carbon oxygen double bond, carbon oxygen double bond. Uh, so where should that go? Well, what if I use the carbon oxygen double bond to put these two pieces of the molecule together? So I'm gonna just stick it like that. Um, that looked funny, like that. Just stick it right in, there in the middle. And putting it right here, it's gonna isolate these guys from each other, like I said, because these, these two need to only be split by these, so they need to be staying far away from the other half of the molecule. Um, and in terms of, let's see, where am I at? So this was the multiplet. The only NMR peak that we haven't figured out yet is this one, two protons that have one neighbor two protons that have one neighbor. So actually I'll just take those question marks off. They belong there. Now let's see, let's see how we're doing. One, two, three, four, five, six types of carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven total. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 hydrogens, two oxygens, actually everything looks pretty good there's one thing i think that i've made a mistake on here when i'm looking at this formula um one mistake that i've made so with this i believe that this group is in the right spot because i need to use this group to separate this half of the molecule from this half of the molecule but i think that i may have drawn it the other way around because when we look at all of the peaks in the proton and mr this peak right here is the one that is the most de-shielded. This peak corresponds to these two guys. So these two guys need to be closer to the oxygen atoms than any other hydrogens in the molecule. And right now they are one, two, three, and one, two, three bonds away, whereas these guys are one, two bonds away. So I think what I need to do is turn this group around so now these hydrogens are only two bonds away from this oxygen atom, which would make them the most deshielded and would make them shifted furthest to the left. This structure, I think, is accurate.